I'm Shuka Oda, and this is the Great British Chef's Signature Series. I'm the chef from Koya Restaurant. We specialize in udon noodles. Today we're in our city branch. We opened about 10 years ago and we're doing how to make udon at home. The one that we make here at the restaurant is called Sanuki Udon and it's from the Sanuki region from Shikoku. The Sanuki Udon is quite a thick one, quite a chewy one. Freshly cooked noodles are one of the best things you can eat, I think. Like you can eat it almost every day like you would eat rice. So I've got 540 grams of udon flour and 60 grams of tapioca flour. We've got 300 milliliters of water with about 35, 38 grams of salt. So it's, a, it's about basically 12.5% of salt water. Obviously in the summer when it's warmer, uh, the dough gets softer. Uh, so you wanna be putting less water in. And then in the winter time, maybe a touch more. So to start with, we mix the tapioca flour simply into the udon flour. And the process of mixing the water into the udon is basically you hold your fingers a bit like chopsticks and you're mixing it so that you're not kneading the dough but aiming for a crumbly dough to begin with. So the mixing part is just the first bit of the noodle udon making. And the kneading part is actually traditionally done by foot. And basically the stepping activates um, all of that gluten in the dough. And the more you step, the more gluten you get. First, you put about a third of the salt water, gradually, of course. You just wanna make sure that you're not kneading and all the bits are still crumbly. I was more of a soba person to begin with, <laughs> but I'm really glad that I got into the udon business because udon is something we can eat every day and I still don't get bored of it. So. <laughs> okay, so it's started to come together. So you put it into a sort of a ball, but it's still quite crumbly, which is totally fine. So uh, we put this dough in the middle of your tray and then we put this on the floor. The first stepping is usually quite soft and then the more you step and roll the more harder it'll become. So you're kind of aiming for a circular oval shape and what you're doing is basically putting your weight on trying to even the dough out and then going from one direction to the other, like that. I think I'm the only chef in London that makes food with their feet. <laughs> so the kneading you do for about three to five minutes and then you step out. Now we just roll the dough into a cylinder and you basically let this rest for 30 minutes and then you step again. Basically the resting, it matures the dough. If you don't rest it, it's, it, it's like anything, like kids, you, the, the more they sleep, the better they behave. So after repeating the process three times, then you knead the dough for about another couple of minutes. It should feel a lot more harder to step. Before we do the final rest, we basically knead this a little bit with your hands. In Japanese, we call it your belly button. So you're, you're kind of folding the dough into the center like so, but at the same time, you're kind of getting the air out of the stomach. Then you want to seal the belly button almost with a little bit of a twist with your fingers like that. This gets another plastic cover. And like so, we rest it for an hour, two hours. So now it's been resting for two hours. Um, I'm going to first give it another step just to flatten it um, so that it's easy to roll out. 
So you just want to lightly flour your work surface. Put the dough. First thing you want to be aiming to do is making this circle into a square. So you're trying to get one corner out and then moving on to the other corner. This is actually a stick from a mop that you, we, we cut off. We use it to um, stir the noodles too. So yeah, that's, that would be my recommendation. <laughs> so we want to start stretching this even more. So what we do is basically roll the dough and then you're pulling the dough and at the same time rolling it out. And then you go to the other corner and do the same thing. And what you're aiming for is basically even thickness. But at the same time, you know, little thick one here and there, thin ones here and there, it's all charm of it. So cutting the dough, you just want to make sure you flour it enough so the dough doesn't stick together and it will still stick together. <laughs> we fold the dough like so. When cutting the noodles, you're just aiming for a similar kind of width, but again, if it's a little bit crooked or a little bit thick, a little bit thin, it all adds to the charm, so I wouldn't worry too much. So you try and grab the middle of it and then kind of bang it on the chopping board so it releases the um, noodles from each other. So that is your noodles done. So we just have to cook it now. On to the dashi making. Dashi is basically the clear soup that we will be serving the noodles with. Uh, you can put uh, various different things in it. Today we're using kombu kelp. It's been soaking for about two hours. And bonito shaves. Okay, so we're gonna put this in a pot. And then I'm gonna put this on at medium heat because we just want to make sure that the umami of the kombu comes out gradually and slowly. We're going to cook the noodles now. Here we have this noodle machine, <laughs> noodle boiling machine. So I'm going to put it in here. So when you're putting the noodles in the pot, you just have to make sure that the water is properly boiling so that the water temperature doesn't drop down significantly when you do drop the noodles in. So the noodles now been cooking for 15 minutes. I'm gonna scoop it out. Um, at home, you can just use a colander. We drain the water and then put it into the ice cold water. You wanna refresh the noodles a few times so that you have um, you completely cool the noodles down. You should take the noodles out of the water because if you keep it in the water, basically all the saltiness goes out into the water rather than kept inside the noodles. So that's your noodles cooked. So this dashi kombu stock has been on the hob for about 10-15 minutes and the kombu comes out at this point. And then instead we put uh, bonito shaves inside. So this has been sitting for about five minutes and then it's now ready to be drained. So just slowly put it in so you're not spilling any bits. This is basically a mixture of usukuchi soy sauce, which is white soy sauce, sugar, mirin, and a little bit of salt. Okay, so we add this, and then we bring this one to boil, and then that's your dashi done. I'm gonna warm up a portion of noodles. So the cooling part basically makes the noodles kind of shrink back again a little bit. And then warming part, it kind of loosens it a little bit. So we put the noodles, and then we leave it in there for maybe a minute until the noodles kind of start to dance again. So the dashi is about to boil, which means it's ready. And then we have the noodles in the blancher, which is dancing nicely. Put it into your bowl. We pour the dashi in. 
On top of this, you can put various different things, but we're just making a simple soup noodle today. So I'm just gonna put some chopped spring onions on top and finish it that. So there we are, we have our simple kake udon ready.